Aloha, and welcome to this episode of the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My guest today is a native of Detroit, Michigan, who is a musician, composer, and arranger. He is a proven entertainer for music lovers of all generations. He has opened for numerous contemporary musical giants, such as Stevie Wonder, George Benson, The Average White Band, Temptations, Pieces of a Dream, and many others. His latest single, My Joy, is climbing the charts. I am happy to have him here today. Let's welcome Lord Yancey to the show. Aloha. Aloha. It's good and, to be here with you. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Look at you looking all stiffy with that hat on. I love that hat. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Let's get started. I know a lot of people want to know, how did you get your start in music? Ah, let me see, it takes me back a couple of years. Go ahead, tell us, tell us. 13, 13 uh, in my <laughs> family church, you know, where I used to go every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, and it seemed like Saturday and Thursday. But anyway, on this one particular Sunday, a gentleman came and he had brought this instrument. And um, I didn't know what this guy was about to do. And anyway, he pulled that instrument out and he went into a song. I can remember the song. It was called I Go to the Rock. But he lit into it so heavy, so hard, with such an authority. And church folks call it the anointing. So that he, he just, I don't know, something pervaded through that horn. And it began to flow through the atmosphere. And, it, and I felt something different. I felt something that made me very curious to know, how did he do this? Some of the other sisters and members, they were just, they were cutting up. Lady threw a baby up in the air. Brother jumped over the bench. He ran and he caught the baby. The baby was good, but the spirit was good. <laughs> <laughs> and so afterwards, I had to meet this gentleman and find out what the shiny thing was in his hands. And he was so kind and gracious that he said, come on, let me show you. He let me hold it. And it was a wrap. It was over. My story began musically that day, many years ago. Wow. You just tell your story. <laughs> I love the way you tell that story. <laughs> I love the way you tell that story. Now, who were your, some of your musical influences? Of course, uh, starting in the church, I used to listen to a gentleman by the name of Bernard Johnson, who was a gospel saxophonist. And it was good. My man was good. Man, I, I made a mistake and I heard this guy named Robert Washington Jr. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All bets was off then, okay? <laughs> we didn't listen to secular music in my house, so uh, through over Washington, he was kind of a no no at that time. And uh -huh. I was like, you know what? If that's going to send me to that place with that guy with the pitchfork and the flames and the barbecue, <laughs> charcoals, I just got to go there because that music of Robert Washington, it spoke to me. And it, 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 I'll tell you, it spoke to thousands of us around, millions of us around the world. It inspired mm -hmm. us to, uh, to stay in music and to um, aspire to be more. But then after Rover started listening to Cold Train and a couple of other uh, forefathers of, of the genre that we love called jazz, and there's just so many to name. That's just a few. Now, where did you study music? I went to Interlocking, and then I went to the University of Michigan, and of course, high school as well. So those three places kind of gave me what I needed to come out in the world and do what I do. <laughs> How many instruments do you play being a musician? Uh, being a musician, well, you know, when you, I started out thinking I wanted to be, come out of school and become a band director, but <laughs> during that time, you get thrown so many different instruments in your face, and you have to learn the basics of, of all of them. But I would say kind of the ones that stuck was piano, and I'm um, sax and I'm on a violin and a few other instruments. So uh, I can do a little something on, on, on quite a few instruments, but those uh, piano and saxophone and flute, those are my days. And those woodwind instruments, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I drive um, trombone. And we're going to leave that brass. <laughs> See, I grew up playing music, so I love music, so I know what you're talking about starting, because I started at the age of six, so, um, but I need to get back into playing. I got out of it when I, when I graduated college. I don't know why, but, you know. Time is not. I, I, <laughs> you tell me. 
<laughs> What's your favorite genre of music to play? Uh, favorite genre of music? I don't have a favorite genre of music. My favorite, I played uh, classical in college. I played jazz. I played gospel in the church. Let me see, I played r and I worked with some blues artists. I worked with some, <laughs> I could keep country artists. So music. Uh, right. Category, I don't even care about the category. Whatever's going to speak to that person in the audience and, and give them something that's going to inspire their week, their day. That's my favorite job of music. I like that answer. I like that answer. Just play music. <laughs> it's music. Now, with this COVID, of course, we're still in this COVID pandemic. And last year, it pretty much put everything to a halt. As far as the musicians, you know, you guys couldn't go tour. It, it was just hard. What did you do during that time to keep your mind busy and to, you know, keep going? <laughs> That's a really good question. I think uh, when we first started, I was about two, three months, I'd probably going to speak for most musicians. We all were ready to pull our hair out of here. There's nothing like being in front of an audience, giving what you give and giving what they give. So I just realized that we we in a different place here. Uh, I got to make something happen. And so what I did was I went in the studio and I just started writing and writing. But all along, I said, oh, okay, man, hey, Nancy, we're doing a Zoom-based this, that, and the other. So I played a lot of Zoom uh, concerts or for organizations, for churches. And, and so I stayed busy creating and performing. Now, have you been back in front of a live audience since then? Actually, I have. Actually, I have. Um, yeah, I've played quite a bit over the last two months. What's that feel like <sighs> to get back on stage in front of people? It feels like uh, where you belong. But when you, like me, taking this whole pandemic thing very serious, it's kind of, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> you're going to do a film. Want to make sure that you're safe and that, that uh, you're protecting those that you love. You know, I have a grandmother that I love to visit. And every now and again, you just might want to hug. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just a lot that you think about while you're out there, but you're called to be there. So you have to do what you have to do. And of course, being in front of um, live audiences now, it, it's kind of hard. I guess, you, you know, usually, like here at the Blue Note, they used to, after the shows, you know, the performers would come out and greet the audiences. But now it's kind of hard with that because either they're not going to do it or you have to mask up or you can't get too close to them. So how does that, that's, that's difference, isn't it? So it feels different to you? It is very different. But the audience, they don't seem to mind. Uh, many folks in the audience, they, they don't care about the mask. I can <laughs> tell you every time I heard, can I have a picture? Can I take a picture? And then they look up at you. Can, uh, can you take your mask off? <laughs> so it's very interesting being in this uh, pandemic. Well, <laughs> I'm just hoping it's over soon so that you guys can get so we can get back to normalcy, you know, when it when it comes time to, to the performances. Now, you've played with many people, you've opened for a lot of people. Who would be your dream collaboration? Who would you just love to who would you just Love to collaborate with. You know, that's, that, again, is an interesting <laughs> question. And the answer is not so cut and dry. For me, it's uh, working and networking with any artist that has a positive message and they're using their gift and their art to make the world better. So it's not a particular person. It's just connecting with people who live in their life their purpose. They want to make it that. That's it. Now, tell us about um, about this new your your new song, "My Joy," which I absolutely love. What was the inspiration behind that tune? Well, many of these songs and that one and the ones to follow came out of the we knew that that it was rough out there, and people needed something that would make them move and exercise and make them feel good on the inside. So, you know, connecting with some of my buddies in Detroit, we got busy uh, writing together and my journey was birthed.
Now here's a question for you, and I and I asked this of, of of all the artists. There are a lot of saxophones, even though you play many instruments, but we really know you on the saxophone. So there's a lot of saxophonists out there in the music industry. What sets you apart from the others? Hmm. I would say that my varied experience with uh, classical. With, uh, Jazz with uh, gospel has given me a different, I can say this, a different spin on how I deliver it. It's probably my intention. When I'm on stage, it's not about the audience, it's not about ego, it's about giving that audience something. So it's a different way that the same note comes out different than it might come out with another person. Maybe it's um, the experience, maybe it's the, the passion, maybe it's uh, a number of things, but for the most part, I would say it's something about passion that I get. That uh, kind of touches people and reaches them. You can see them come in, in one way, the concert one way, and they leave out the whole other way. That's when you know that the spiritual aspect was communicated and you've done your job as, as the two of them. Now you have a you have many organizations that are dear to your heart, but what's the what's the one the one that is most dear to your heart? What organization is that that you uh, work with? I work with a lot of different nonprofits, but I would say that I have a passion for working with children and inspire them. Working on a new program now that will kind of get out there and talk to these young men and boys that are coming up who may not have good role models or whose mental conditioning may need just a little you know, inspiration. So we're going to bring some professionals I know and meet that, marry that with the, with the children and just offer them a glance uh, of the world in a different way that they may never get to see it if someone like me don't come along and share. Now, I think you're going to play for us today, right? A little something for us? I can do that. <laughs> yeah, we can make that happen. You can make that happen? Yeah, that happen, yes. You want to set it up? Yeah, you can set it up. Sure. Let's do it. I'm going to let you, I'm gonna let you tell us what you're going to play. This particular song is entitled happy. And this is another one of those songs that the audience has communicated with me that you know, it, it makes them feel good. And I wanted to share that with you and your audience. So I got it queued up. Let's see what we can do. Okay.
thank you, thank you, girl. Sure, I need to I need to find out where you're playing next and 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 come see you, fly to see you. Okay. And we're gonna we're gonna get to that in just a minute. We'll get to that in just a minute. But I'm looking around your I'm looking around your studio and I see all your <laughs> all your instruments. Is there a particular brand of instrument um that you play, not brand yet yeah, brand of saxophone that you prefer? Ah, that's a really that's a good one. That's a good one. I've, I've got uh, a lot of samplers. <laughs> I've got I've got a lot of instruments, so I don't really want to say that <laughs> the answer to that question just yet. I'm working, <laughs> I'm working on a new endorsement. So. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I don't want to get into the, the logistics of that, but uh, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> you know how it is. I haven't got this endorsement yet, so I'm not going to say. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to be I feel you. I feel you. But I just was noticing it, and I was just, I was just admiring all of your, your, your instruments back there. Uh, you can't see the whole scope. But I've got stuff. I got, I'm pretty I, sure. I, I, I give them away. <laughs> okay, the kids. <laughs> oh wow, that's nice. Absolutely, absolutely. Very passionate about that. Uh, I mean, I'd rather see a child with an instrument in their hand than with a gun any day. Oh so wow. Over the years, that's been a program that I've supported and made sure that if I see a promising student, that I make sure they got what they need. If they can't afford it. We step in and we make it happen. Wow, that's that's awesome. Now, what advice? There's a lot of musicians that are that are coming out. There are a lot of new musicians coming out. What advice would you give a new artist coming into the industry today? Uh, what advice would I give them? I would tell them to honor your word, honor your commitments. Um, don't give, give more than what's required. Uh, don't make this business about your ego. Make it about the fans that you represent. I would tell them to uh, make sure you got a good PR person, like Ms. Desiree Benson. Make sure you got good management. Make sure you got a good support team, because team is everything. And it's a whole lot of more <laughs> things that I would say, but that'll take longer than the time we have today. <laughs> What new projects, if any, are you working on? Are there any shows, virtual shows coming up that we should be marking on our calendars? You know, I'm, I'm music. I got a lot of new music coming out. It's coming down. Yeah, like, it's a, that's a whole lot. So definitely stay tuned to the social media platforms, the website, and uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of new music. But performances, yeah. There's uh, quite some shows coming up as well. Where can where can people go to find out to find your for, to find your to find your music and to find your performances like me? <laughs> okay. Primarily, all of that is it's uploaded to uh, Lord Yansky Music dot com as well as uh, Lord Yansky on Facebook and Instagram L Yansky. So everything going on with me gets. <laughs> On those platforms. Wow. What do you like to do? What What do you like to do in your spare time? Because I know you're so busy. Spare time? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, in my spare time, I like to work out. I like to read. Gosh, I like to spend time with, with, with people that matter. Uh, so I love great. They have good conversations with good friends. Uh, it's just on and on. I love to. Uh, Travel and do photography. Oh. Wow, okay. It's a lot of different things that I've done. These are very, <laughs> they, they all over the place. <laughs> well, our time has come to an end. I'm looking in our little chat. You know how we do these interviews now through Zoom? I'm looking through my chat. So our time has, has come to an end, but I thank you so much, first of all, for staying up late. Uh, to do this interview and for the technical difficulties we had prior to the show. But I thank you so much um, 
for for staying up late doing the interview and of course you know give us me giving us a little sample of what you do i'm definitely going to be looking you up i'm definitely going to be finding out where you are and come to see you in person and maybe one day you'll get to come to hawaii here i've been there seven times really favorite places in the whole wide world i've seen some parts of this world <laughs> but we'll have to get you back over here if you have not been to hawaii you got it. something special about hawaii any island just choose one <laughs> <laughs> but we'll definitely have to get you back over here again thank you so much for being with us and to my viewers until next time aloha and god bless <laughs>